Chicago White Sox fans seem to think all the franchise's problems could be solved if owner Jerry Reinsdorf just sold the team. But would a new owner fix everything? Let's discuss next on Locked On White Sox. You are Locked On White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hello, I'm your host, Todd Welter, a lifelong Sox fan and the site expert of Southside Showdown, part of the Fan Side of Network. You can check out my written content at southsideshowdown.com. And also, I've covered Major League Baseball for uh, outlets such as the Associated Press. And thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at Lockdown White Sox. Smash the like button. Also, follow or subscribe to the show on wherever you get your podcasts. And hey, leave a five-star review. So I was on the Blackout Show podcast last night with uh, Chris Gonzalez, better known as Gonzo, uh, Jay, and uh, Ozzy Gian Jr. I had a great time, a uh, great discussion about what is going on with the White Sox. Uh, make sure to subscribe and like their show on YouTube under Gian's Grid or wherever you get your podcasts. But just make sure that, again, Lockdown White Sox is your first listen. Then them. You know, I can play nice in the sandbox. Uh, but one of the points that Ozzy Jr. brought up that I thought was fascinating was the criticism that Jerry Reinsdorf doesn't spend money. And if the team was sold, things would just get better. Now, Ozzy Jr.'s point was relative to uh, past owners, you know, because the Sox have had three past owners, not spending nearly what Reinsdorf has spent, and that a new owner might not fix everything. So I figured I would dive into whether a new owner would magically fix everything, and even if Jerry's still uh, owning the team, what it will actually take to fix the Sox. Then let's dive into Pedro Grafol's absolutely ridiculous comments about Martin Maldonado and why it is time to free Corey Lee. Borrowed that one from Jay. Uh, and finally, Sox lost 3-1 to one last night as they got swept by the Blue Jays. Let's go over what was good. What was bad in the series? Uh, but today's show is brought to you by Supply House. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to get parts fast. Shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at supplyhouse.com. So Ozzie Gian Jr. shared some interesting insights about Jerry Reinsdorf on yesterday's Blackout Show podcast I was on. Uh, the Gians obviously have deep ties to Jerry, so I trust what he is saying that, uh, Reinsdorf is not going to be impressed with manager Pedro Grafal's recent uh, butt-kissing comments. Uh, this is what Grafal recently said. I believe I pulled this from uh, the Chicago Sun-Times, Daryl Van, Van Scarwin's write-up. Quote, I've known Jerry for a year and a half, and nobody wants to win more than he does. I know that for a fact because I'm the one who gets, the, who gets phone calls, and I talk to him. I get text messages. He is 100% committed to winning, and he's extremely knowledgeable about the game of baseball. He's not just a fan. The questions he asks, he knows exactly what's going on. He knows the game. You're not in the game for 44 years, around a thousand coaches sitting in on meetings and listen and listen and listen and listen and watch and watch and not know the game. He's passionate. He's extremely competitive. End quote. So basically, Ozzy Jr. was saying that uh, Jerry doesn't like bootlickers. So he's not going to be impressed with uh, Pedro sucking up. Think about it, though. Jerry is a loyal guy. The Sox do want to be portrayed in the best possible light. One of the reasons A.J. Pruszynski is no longer a team ambassador is his criticism of the team. But on the same end, Jerry doesn't have a problem with Ozzie Gian Jr. or Ozzie Gian Sr. pretty much being brutally honest after every game on the postgame show. And think about the state of the White Sox. The best part of the White Sox right now is their postgame show. But it is kind of weird for Pedro to go the bootlicking route, especially since it's probably so late in the game in terms of his fate. And an owner who has repeatedly said, we just need to be competitive in September. And I think that's just one of the biggest criticisms from Sox fans is, is Jerry is not given enough financial resources to be successful in October. And fans keep bringing signs to the game, wishing Jerry would sell the team. You know, you get those chants of sell the team. 
And the magic cure that a lot of my fellow White Sox fans think is Jerry Reinsdorf just needs to sell the team. And I'm actually one of them. I think Jerry, when the moment he said David Eckstein was my favorite player and romanticizing about Branch Rickey, I think he just has this romantic view of a game and an era that has been passed long, long ago. And he needs to move on. And especially if you've told your heirs to sell the team, why not just do it now? But then Ozzie Jr. said something that stopped me dead in my tracks. And it was, a wealthy owner might not fix everything. And I think that's a very fair point, and it got me thinking. First, what if that new owner does come in with the intention of moving the team out of Chicago? Are you still going to be a fan? You know, because that's a speculation. Somebody's going to buy the team and move it to Nashville. And I get the pros and cons of moving the team. The pro would be you're not sharing a, a market with another team. The downside, though, is you're going to be sharing, you're going to have a smaller market to yourself. Where in Chicago, there's still always going to be the possibility. A new generation is born every day to compete with the Cubs and bring in fans. If you have superstar players. And I remember, I mean, think about it. Back in the 90s, especially the early 90s, the Sox were the it team. The only reason why the Cubs still had, you know, a lot of national conversation was they were on WGN. But the Sox had Frank Thomas. The Sox were successful. And then Jerry torpedoed that with his actions during the strike. Two, Steve Cohen. He came in and spent lavishly for the Mets. That didn't get them any closer to a World Series. And three, you could get somebody who buys a team that is even worse. Ask the Oakland A's about... Uh, Fisher and the Washington Commanders with Daniel Snyder. And the thing is, when we keep chanting to sell the team, I think the thing we're missing is is the so what the White Sox need, regardless of who the owner is, is a front office that has a plan and can execute the plan. That is why there are six people that you should always be looking at. General Manager Chris Getz, Assistant GMs Josh Barfield and Jin Wong, Pitching Advisor Brian Bannister, Director of Amateur Scouting Mike Shirley, and Director of Player Development Paul Yanish. Those are the most important people in the franchise. These are the six people that are going to shape the franchise going forward. All Jerry does, and again, I'm not defending Jerry. I'm just saying that sometimes we do need to have a little bit of perspective, and that's what Ozzie Guillen Jr. was saying. All Jerry does is set the budget. And yes, I would like to have, I would like him to have an unlimited budget because you know, while we keep talking about spending, you don't need to spend recklessly. Look at the Mets. You need to spend correctly. But at the same time, you can't put limits on your front office, especially when it comes into bringing superstar star talent. Like you can't just say, well, let's give Martin Maldonado the most overall money, but let's make him earn another 50 million. You got to pay the premium market price, especially when you have superstar talent on the market. You can't go into the 2022 season saying, here's the same, basically the same budget as 2021. Go win the World Series, especially when you have a hole in second and right field. And that's how you got Josh Harrison. And you can't have an owner who laughs at the idea of pursuing Shohei Otani. But as, you know, to be fair, when it comes to Jerry, historically, he's spent the most money Think about it. Charles Comiskey was so cheap that the Sox threw a World Series. But again, Getz has to use this influence because Jerry seems to love Chris Getz. He needs to use his influence to get him to start paying that going rate of over $100 million for premium talent. And then on the flip side, invest more in the analytics and more in scouting. But ideally, Getz and Shirley start drafting up the middle in rounds one through 10 and preferably hitting in rounds one through three. Look at the Orioles, the Brewers, and the Rays. They draft hitting. And then Getz, Yanish, and Bannister are establishing a culture in the minors where everyone is playing the same style of baseball from rookie ball to the majors. It's what Theo Epstein did with the Cubs. And Barfield and Wong are helping Getz construct the major league roster correctly. One that preferably hits for power in a homer-friendly ballpark, 
one that can feel the ball, and one that pitches well. That's it. You know, Elon Musk and Mark Cuban could come in, but if they don't hire the right people in the front office, it doesn't matter. And you can point to Jerry for uh, having conducting the worst GM search in the history of mankind as a reason for him to sell. But who says another rich dude doesn't do just as bad as his general manager search? I'm just saying we can get another wealthy person in here who might just be worse. But at the same time, I agree. We might get a wealthy person in here who could do way better. Well, let's discuss another Pedro Gafal comment that should scare you when it comes to the developing a promising player next on Locked On White Sox. Order supplies from a wet, from the website that's made for sk the skilled trades. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple clicks at supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies with fast delivery anywhere in the U.S. Need help with an order? Get industry-leading after-sales service from their friendly and knowledgeable customer support team and talk to a real person every time. And there's great news for plumbers, technicians, and contractors. Being a pro has its perks. Trade industry professionals can join their free Trade Master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every order. Over 100,000 uh, pros already trust the Trade Master program to deliver results. Apply for your membership today and get a competitive edge on every order at supplyhouse.com slash TM. Save money and time when you order online. Order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. And are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today, a free 24-7 uh, sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest sports uh, stories without all that screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And the White Sox travel to uh, Milwaukee tomorrow to face the Brewers. First pitch on Friday is at 7, 10 p.m. Central. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. And welcome back to the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I am your host, Todd Welter. And thanks for making the show your first listen. Lots of great White Sox podcasts out there. As I said, the Blackout show I was on yesterday, so make sure you check that out. As I've always just said, I just hope I'm the first one you take in. And make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at Lockdown White Sox. Smash the like button and also follow or subscribe to the show on wherever you get your podcasts and leave a five-star review. So I feel like a broken record. I feel like lately I've just been hammering on Pedro Grafal's bad comments, but that's because he keeps making them. And I also feel like I'm hammering on Martin Maldonado, but that's because he keeps playing them. And either Pedro Grafal didn't like Corey Lee's rebuttal to Pedro's flat comments that I discussed on Monday and Tuesday so much that he will ignore reality to spin, justify playing Martin Maldonado at catcher over Lee or Grafal's grip on reality is starting to slip. Uh, Scott Merkin tweeted this out at Scott Merkin quote, and this is what Pedro said, quote, this can change from day to day, week to week. Right now we are comfortable with what's going on. Marty Maldonado is not a 300 hitter, but he's not a 100 hitter either. So eventually he'll run into some balls and he'll do what he normally does. At the same time, we have to continue to develop Corey Lee. End quote. Uh, Lee did end up DHing last night. He hit fifth. But the last time Cor uh, Marty Maldonado hit over 200, 200 in a 162 game season was 2019. And even then, he hit 215. In 2021, he hit 172. 2022, 186. 2023, 191. And right now, he's at 083. That decline in average is you should have retired two years ago and run into some balls. He can't even find the ball the past four seasons. And the few times he did find the ball in the past, yeah, there was some pop in that bat. He did hit 42 home runs over the past three seasons. He has one homer, though, this year and a 131 slugging percentage. 
He's a minus 25 WRC plus, and I talked about his F4 yesterday. Now, to be fair, I got to raise my hand. I said before the season, and I wrote about it um, when I was writing White Sox uh, content for the Windy City, part of the fan site and network. I would rather have Maldonado over Salvador Perez. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't a good take by me. But my rationale was more on Maldonado was cheap and was only going to cost you a one-year deal. And there's no such thing as a bad one-year deal. But this might be the closest because Maldonado is not only an automatic out, but he's killing the development of Corey Lee. And that is the scary thing about Pedro's comment. He thinks Pedro's eventually, or he thinks Martin Maldonado is just eventually going to go on a hitting streak. So I just, I got to keep playing him to the detriment of Corey Lee's development. And even if Corey Lee is nothing more than a backup catcher or rotational first base or DH with Gavin Sheets going forward, you are sacrificing a guy that is under team control that's going to come cheap at a position of value. You know, the catcher, he's going to call, he's, he's going to help call the game. He's going to help prevent runs. He's going to help prevent pass balls. Try to throw out runners. You know, the catcher's involved in so much of the game. And I know Edgar Cuero is the future, but if you could have two good catchers, like when the Sox did have uh, that one decent season with Yasmani Grandal and James McCann, that helps you tremendously, especially if Corey Lee can keep hitting, you can rotate him in the future with Gavin Sheets at DH because you're moving on from Eloy. And Corey Lee, he saved the Sox from getting shut out last night when he hit a home run in the ninth. And he should be technically leading the team in average if he had enough bats to qualify, but he doesn't because he's sitting behind Martin Maldonado. Lee has a 274, 311, 407 slash line. He's got a Babbitt of 346. So at least, you know, the ball is getting in play. Maldonado barely even puts the ball in play as he has a 125 Babbitt. And Corey Lee's defensive metrics are destroying Maldonado. And again, I feel like a broken record because I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago. But Pedro's comments were so maddening. This is a guy, I mean, I talked about it. One of the ways that you, one of the changes the Sox need to make is not only fire Grafal, but DFA Maldonado. Hold him accountable for this bad season. But instead, let's just keep giving him his flowers. You know, again, Pedro goes from calling the team flat to just flat out lying. I'm sorry, we're not dumb. Martin Maldonado should have retired in 2021. Well, the Sox are done with this 13-game stretch of games against the Yankees, Orioles, and Blue Jays. Let's discuss the Sox getting swept yesterday and go over who was good and who was bad in that three-game set next on Locked On White Sox. And it's winner take all in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. FanDuel has a parlay right now for tonight's Dallas uh, Mavericks versus Minnesota Timberwolves game, where if you put a $10 wager on the Mavericks money line, Kyrie Irving scoring 20 or more points, along with P.J. Washington and Carl Anthony Towns both hitting two or more threes, you can win $50.38 because it's going off at plus 503. And uh, hey, if you think Anthony An An Edwards is going to have a big night, why not go big? Plus 2,400 right now for him scoring 45, more po 45 or more points. So why not see if he can have a big night and help keep the T-Wolves alive? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And the White Sox travel to Milwaukee tomorrow to face the Brewers. 
First pitch on Friday at 7 to 10 p.m. Central. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. So if you've stuck with me this long, really appreciate it. Love you, everydayers. You and I, were, we're in this together in terms of if we're still watching this terrible season. And if you've tuned out, I'll give you the cliff notes if you don't want to watch this uh, disaster. I can handle it. Trust me. If you knew my past, I can handle a lot. That's why I do this every day. Or me, and I'm just, I guess I'm loyal to a fault. Well, the Sox lost 3-1 to one last night to complete getting swept by the Blue Jays. It was the first time in franchise history the Sox got swept during a seven or more game homestand. New and inventive ways of hitting rock bottom in franchise history is happening this season. You know, and remember, for perspective, the White Sox have been around since 1900. A, basically, a century and a generation have gone by, and the Sox have finally accomplished this terrible milestone. And the Sox lost 12 of 13 games. So thankfully, they no longer have to face the Blue Jays, although they do have to face the Orioles in Baltimore, and the Yankees do eventually have to come to guaranteed rate. And it doesn't get any easier as the Sox have to go play the NL Central leading Milwaukee Brewers this weekend. I'll be there on Sunday. So if you see me, say hi. I might be wearing uh, socks and Brewers stuff. Got to remember, I covered the Brewers for a decade. And I also worked at the ballpark. They gave, you know, I got a paycheck from the team. And I watched a lot of bad Brewers baseball. It's one of the reasons why I can watch the White Sox. So if you see me wearing uh, mixed because the uh, Brewers are my NL team. You can have a step team. But, you know, as you know, I like to uh, talk about who is good and who is bad after every series. So let's go with the good first. Gavin Sheets, he was 0 for 3 last night, but he had a walk. And he did reach base in every game during this series. He had a homer on Monday as he was 2 for 5. And he was 1 for 2 on Tuesday. And uh, seriously, is Gavin Sheets good at baseball? And more importantly, is he a piece the Sox can use going forward? He's a left-handed bat with some pop. Among qualified batters, he leads the team in on-base percentage with 356, has a 13.3 walk rate, 16.5 K rate, and 124 WRC+. Plus. To me, that that's a guy that you can use going forward. I know some people are saying, well, we got to trade him. I think teams look at him as a replacement level player. And again, the Sox need to just keep adding, you know, they do need to keep some guys that they have under control. And especially with Andrew Vaughn being awful this season. I think you want to keep and Eloy Jimenez injury history, pretty much meaning they're not going to exercise his option next year. You knew you do need a future piece at DH, especially one that's on the cheap. And one that gets on base. So, yeah, Gavin Cheats, he's good at baseball. I'm going to die on that hill. Uh, Nicky Lopez, he had a nice series. One for three on Monday, two for three on Tuesday with an RBI. Uh, did see his nine-game uh, reaching base safely snapped yesterday with an 0 for 4 night. But he's been quietly on a nice run. Like I said, he's reached base safely in nine straight games. Nine games, nine times. Um, and I wouldn't actually mind if the Sox brought back Nicky Lopez next year in a utility role, if he's willing to accept it, you know, cause you're going to have Colson Montgomery at short, hopefully, and hopefully Jacob Gonzalez, who's already at triple a or at double a doing well at second in the move. He's your future second baseman and maybe he's ready by next year. So you could have. A guy like Nicky Lopez coming off the bench who plays a good, you know, fields the position well. 
has a little speed on the base path. He's not going to give you any pop. But again, and I'm talking about a utility role, people. Not talking about starting. Corey Jolks, one for four last night and on Tuesday. And he was two for four on Monday. The guy needs to play every day. I will keep saying that. I'll keep repeating it. Play him every day. Let's see if he can actually be a future piece. If anything, can he be your future fourth outfielder? Otherwise, if he's on a heater, ride the heater. And actually, Andrew Vaughn, he was okay. He had a uh, hit in each game. Although, again, he had that terrible double play on Tuesday. But hey, that average is getting close to 200. Yay! Progress! So who is bad? Well, rookie Brian Ramos, he is going through it at the plate. He was 0 for 7 in the series. And his slash line is now down to 196, 208, 239. But hey, something can be gained when he is struggling. Nothing is gained with Martin Maldonado hitting 083. Something is gained, though, with R Ramos being in the struggle. Because you know what? Baseball has come for him. Now he needs to adjust back. This is what happens in the developmental timeline. So we need to keep playing him. Producing runs was bad. The Sox were outscored 15-4. to four. Chris Flexen, well, he wasn't bad last night, but he wasn't good either. He gave up two runs in his start, so that's good. But he walked five. That's bad. And uh, Tim Hill, he had a, one, a rough one in relief on Tuesday. He gave up three runs and six hits, and I'm waiting for his arm to fall off. And they keep going to him. Granted, he's one of their lefty relievers, but he's been getting a lot of work. And I'm sorry, with the way that he looks, looks like he should be selling me some white walls. And I mean that in an endearing way. You know, he, he just he doesn't look like a guy who should be on the mound. And then there he is with that arm angle. And he's been pretty solid. So to see him struggle on Tuesday was kind of tough to see. Well, that wraps up this edition of Lockdown White Sox. Before I go, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports, uh, find Lockdown sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And I'll be back tomorrow to discuss whether the Sox should trade Garrett Crochet. Uh, also, their up uh, upcoming three-game series against the Milwaukee Brewers. I'll give you some dining tips if you're coming to Milwaukee for the weekend series. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page at Lockdown White Sox. Smash that like button and give a five-star review on wherever you get your podcasts. And let me know your thoughts on today's topics. Would Jerry selling the team fix the Sox? Pedro's awful take on Martin Maldonado getting playing time over Corey Lee. And who is good and who is bad in the series against Toronto? You can leave them on Twitter at Todd J. Dub, or you can email me at LockdownWhiteSox at gmail.com. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.